Okay, uh, good morning. First, I would like to thank the organizing committee for their kind invitations uh, for me to talk on this topic. So uh, our talk will be an overview, uh, as the topic said. So I will start with the definitions. The definitions of the endobronchial tuberculosis is that you have to have the histological examinations of the lesions endoscopically uh, that show granulomatous information with a KCH necrosis or a positive acid fast bacillus on cultures or the, from the sections. Its prevalence is around 10 to 40 percent of all pulmonary tuberculosis. And uh, surprisingly, the cost is very variable, so make you hard to make a diagnosis uh, clinically. And this is just a pathologist that you can see the granuloma with uh, uh, special cells. And uh, the pat pathogenesis uh, is either the direct spread of the tubercle bacilli from parenchymal tuberculosis, uh, which has a high uh, abundance of uh, tuberculous uh, bacilli, like in uh, cavity lesions, or disseminations of tubercle bacilli from peribronchial lymphatic channels uh, that drains uh, the uh, lymphs to the lymph node uh, in mediastinums, or either the ruptures of the nodes uh, beneath the uh, trachea or beneath the bronchi to go into the endobronchially. Or it may directly implant of the inhaled mycobacterium tuberculosis into the bronchial wall mucosa. You have to divide the disease into active disease, which is the, uh, you can demonstrate active calcination material, oscillation, granulation, tissue formation, with demonstrated the positive tubercle bacilli on the cultures, and a fibrotic stage of fibrotic disease, which all, only you see the fibrosis endoscopically, and uh, you cannot find the uh, tubercle or, uh, or the, uh, the bacteria. Left membrane class is most frequently involved, as uh, you know. Maybe it's because of anatomical complex by the aortic arch, maybe it's a longer than the right side, or maybe the left mediastinal lymph node infected uh, faster than the right side. To make a di diagnosis, clinically, uh, we know that a female has more prevalence on this disease than male. Patients may come with the coughing, losing weight, hemoptysis, chest pain, or dyspnea. It's a commonly coincidence with the parenchymal disease. It happened in your second or third decade of life and it has a misdiagnosis of asthma wheezings because of the wheezings. Sputum positive AFB in around 13 to 50%, and tuberculin skin test positive in 59%. If you do the IGRA test, it's only sensitive in 64 to 92%. If the patients have upper airway involvement, this means tracheal involvement, the lesions need to be less than eight millimeters of the lumens before symptoms happen. And at that time, the peak flow will decrease to 40%, resistance increase to 600%, with moderate uh, exercise limitations, and the FEV ones decrease to 75% predicted. So, uh, lung function test is a very late diagnosis on this disease. Also, the chest X-ray may show a normal uh, in 10%. Mostly, it shows pulmonary infiltrations. 60% of the patients show parenchymal infiltrations, with uh, 24% show losing the, the lung volumes. 8% show a normal chest X-ray. Patients may come in with the post of such pneumonia, atelectasis, CT scans can show you the leash, where the lesion is and the extent of the lesions. And it can differentiate active from the fibrotic stage by seeing the wall of the airways, which uh, if it's swelling, it means it's likely to be the active one. Bronchoscopically view, 
Dr. Chung uh, separated uh, uh, the endobronchial lesions into the active caseatings, the edematous hyperemic, the fibrotic, and the tumorous. All four characters uh, can have a high chance to go to the uh, obstructive uh, lesions after we treat. If the lesions turn out to be a granular, ulcerative, or non symmetric bronchitis, it has a low chance to go to, uh, to, the, to the fibrotic uh, stage later. So this is uh, just a tumorous uh, stage. It's caused by the delayed extensions of the submucosal limb node. And this is a granular and a fibrotic stage. This is a non symmetric non-specific bronchitis that caused uh, some obstruction. The management, mainly of the management of endobrachial tuberculosis is to eradicate the tubercle bacilli. And the prevention of the most undesirable consequence, which is uh, stenosis. There are studies uh, said that you can have persistent bronchostenosis in 41% CT disease, especially if the age of the patients more than 45 years old, if it had a peer or combined fibrocytic subtypes when you saw him, if the durations from the onset of the shift complaints to antitubercular treatments more than three months. And this is uh, already been uh, said that uh, if you see endobronchially the characters of the involvement, you have a uh, High chance if they have uh, that first four findings. And this also, they find out that uh, endobronchial lesion can change, you know, and uh, uh, it, it doesn't matter what you saw that will predict uh, the outcome. If it is the active stage, you have to control infections and prevent tegrobronchial stenosis. And we all know that corticosteroid does not help in this situation. If the patients come in with a fibrotic stage, medical treatment has no benefits. Antitubercular chemotherapy is more than three months in the patients with airway involvement uh, will predict the persistent airway stenosis mean you cannot predict the patients whether they will go to the airway stenosis or not before three months of treatment. So usually if you are suspicious that patients should have an tuberculosis, you can do a surveillance endoscopically. And if the patient has system, you do balutation, stents, lasers, alcohol plasma correction, cryotherapy, or uh, if you have endobrachial ultrasound, you can early predict it whether the patients will go for a bronchostenotic type or to, to evaluate the underlying cartilaginous structures. If the patient doesn't have cartilage, they can easily go to the bronchostenotic type. Even more though, uh, maybe nearly 20 years ago, uh, he reported 30 patients. In these 30 patients, 12 patients continue to have dyspnea after treatment. In these 12 patients, one patient needs pneumonectomy. Six patients, uh, he had to put a stand in. In these six patients, I mean, uh, the, and, and on the rest, in five patients, repeat uh, balloon dilatations only, uh, the symptoms is improving. So, balloon dilatation alone is sufficient in 30 to 40 percent. Also, I said about the radio EBUS, uh, whether you, you have it or, or not, it will help you earlier time. The airway stents, they suggest a silicone stent because, uh, as you know, we can easily uh, remove it after the patient's getting better. Another series, uh, he follows uh, 80 patients, and uh, the only things that I can tell you, the, the, the story is the same. You try balloon dilatations first, 
And if it's, it's work, it's work. If it's not work, you can put a, a stent in, and then you wait for, for some time, and then you try to remove the stent, and you will get a, a success. As you see, there are some patients that you cannot remove the stent at all. So uh, the decisions to put the stent in during the active phase of the disease uh, is very mandatory. So this is another series. We, all, we only have a case series here in endobronchial tuberculosis management. There are no comparable uh, uh, studies in, in, in this kind of, of disease because of the rarity. In these studies, uh, he report in seven year experience, seven patients, and he had uh, 11 dilatations, uh, 10 stents were put in with one Y stent, which mean durations of 32 months, uh, one pneumothorax, two stents migrations with no mortalities. They can, cannot come up with the no durations of stent guidelines and they suggest attempt to remove stent in eight to 16 months. And this is the latest uh, report uh, from Xi Jiuli uh, from China, uh, suggested uh, repeated bronchoscopic balloon dilatations in non-malignant. Uh, non-malignant central airway obstruction in this series mostly is uh, endobronchial tuberculosis. So this study came out that around five times uh, repeated balloon dilatations, it's still working in this uh, kind of uh, disease. This is an example of patients who came in with uh, total uh, left lung atelectasis, and after opening to put a stent in, you can see uh, the re-expansion with some upper lobes still have uh, atelectasis in the disease. So my conclusions and practical points is that this disease is very difficult to diagnose. You can suspect it if the patients who had tuberculosis came in with unproportionate cough. They cough a lot, but they have so little uh, lesions on the chest x-ray, or came in with a dyspnea, and you can hurt the long chies. If the patients had active first, with no symptoms, conservative treatment is mandatory. Uh, the, and the lung function should be uh, done after the complete treatment and bronchoscopy if indicated. If the patient in active phase come in with the symptoms, then you have to do a bronchoscopy, you have to prove whether it's active phase and uh, whether the patients need balloon dilatations or stent is uh, controversy. controversies. These patients come in with fibrotic phase with no symptoms and lung function impair. Whether you have to do interventions is still, we don't know. It depends on the how much uh, impairments of the lung function the patient has, because they have no symptoms. If the patients came in with the symptoms, we do a bronchoscopy, we prove that this is not the active phase, and then uh, we choose the interventions management. If you can see no lumens, endoscopically, I suggest to consult the surgeons to do a, a bronchopacity. If you find the single lesions endoscopically, so you can do a bronchoscopically interventions or surgical collections. It depends on the patients, on the discussions, on, the, on whether you have a, a good surgeon to do the bronchopacity or not. But if the complex lesion, it means uh, only bronchoscopic interventions is available. Uh, the complex lesions mean if you had more than two lesions, or one lesion that uh, length, the length is more than two centimeters. And that, that's all I have to say. Thank you. <clears throat> Uh, thank you, Jamsek, for that uh, lucid presentation on the management of the tracheobronchial stenosis, particularly tuberculous tracheobronchial stenosis, which is uh, most relevant in the part of this country. We have one-fourth of the global TB burden in India. 
in fact uh, most of these cases uh, because having worked in a, a tertiary care institute for more than 25 years in the tb we have seen most of these cases being misdiagnosed as asthma mm. and some cases were diagnosed as lung cancer they have referred to us so the advent of the interventional pulmonology it was made easy to diagnose these cases of course and not only diagnose like a lot of therapeutic interventions also i invite any if there are any questions from the audience to dr jamisak uh, were on two questions if there are no questions i have one question from the regarding the role of steroids in the endobronchial tuberculosis you said there is no role of uh, steroids i think we have presented in one of the slide this was no role in stenosis or as a whole in the endobronchial tuberculosis because it's we the one of the standard saying is uh, there is a role of steroids in endobronchial tuberculosis but if already the stenosis has happened of course there will not may not be any role i want to hear from you okay what what i say that is because there are no randomized control trial uh, on steroids in endobronchial tuberculosis and also there are no anecdotal report that uh, the benefit of the steroids we we uh, we have in in endobronchial tuberculosis what we ap applied and what uh, the people who who love steroids said is uh, is just uh, evidence some evidence in the non tuberculous endobronchial benign stenosis like uh, in post uh, Uh, endotracheal tube uh, uh, tracheal stenosis, and they they, they uh, have a report uh, of the injection of the uh, uh, steroid submucosally uh, may help. But uh, my personal experience is that uh, I, we, we we try all because uh, in India, not work. in India, we give uh, steroids in endobronch. In fact, uh, I attended. A yesterday when the session on the rigid bronchoscopy they have shown some cases presenting as a growth uh, ultimately diagnosed by biopsy and and they have given a, a two months course of intensive phase uh, uh, after the intensive phase along with the steroids then only you do an intervention if, if there is an activity of the disease thank you we we, we could need a randomized control trial yeah. Yeah. Uh, if there are no questions we will go for the next talk i request uh, hello sir thank you one, one uh, i think so thanks dr jamsak for the wonderful we have a exposition time for one question thanks yeah, for only that, that will be the last question thanks for that wonderful uh, presentation on uh, tb stenosis actually sir now can you just enumerate between the left main stenosis and the right main stenosis what are the difference uh, dr sunil you are not audible audible you are not audible is it okay now yeah yeah fine yeah, thanks for the wonderful presentation on tb stenosis actually sir i just want what are the tips on left main stenosis and the right main stenosis what is your usual take on how do you approach your left main and right main any difference in, when it comes to especially left main bronchial stenosis uh, the question is that there is difference in the approach if there is a left main bronchial stenosis or right main bronchial stenosis oh sure sure because the right main is shorter easier <laughs> for you to open it up and the left main is longer and you don't know actually how long the stenotic is uh except that you have the history and the ct scan before or you have exam means it's before it's 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 close so the length of the stenosis when you not when when it's totally collapsed it's 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 related to the risk that uh you will penetrate the wall of the of the airways right so right main is quite more easier but most of the time you will lose the right upper lobes because of the short uh, uh segments of the of the right main so usually the the stenosis involve the right upper lobe also so uh yeah it's it's it if you the ip Uh, uh doctors and doing the dilatations of the endobronchial tuberculosis you will love right main but unfortunately left main is more prevalent than than right main thank you uh, thank you thank you sir